Applesack is Good News Broadcast, speaking to Barbara Dean. Hi, how are you? Hi, Paul. Nice to talk to you. Nice to speak with you. Did you say you're a nurse practitioner? I am. I'm a nurse practitioner, that and is. I practice out of Silicon Valley, California. Oh, is that right? Okay. Do they have a lot of need for you there? They do. You know, all over the country, you know, 35 million women have osteoporosis, so it's a huge issue that we like to talk about. Okay, and their men have it as well, right? They do. About 9 million men in the U.S. suffer from osteoporosis as well, so it's a huge issue. Okay. Fact, the Surgeon General says it's right on par with smoking and diabetes. Okay, well those are very serious. Uh, does, does one cause the other? Well, actually, smoking does contribute to osteoporosis, so people who smoke are much more likely to fracture a bone. Okay, so now what are some things that, uh, well, first of all, people should know about. What are some things people should know about this uh, problem? First of all, they should figure out how to get it diagnosed, right? Right. So one thing that people can do is go to bonehealth.com. There's a list of risk factors there, so people can see if they're more likely to suffer from this silent disease. After all, there are no signs and symptoms. The other thing they can do is get a bone mineral density test. That test gives us an opportunity to take a peek inside the bones and see if they're more likely to develop a fracture. Okay, and uh, um, but don't they people have pain from osteoporosis? Well, a few people will have some pain. Um, usually that's after a fracture occurs, but before a fracture occurs, it's a silent disease. And I guess the last thing we want to do is develop that, fra that hip fracture and then we find out, oh my gosh, we have osteoporosis, and perhaps we could have been taking medication for it for, for years to prevent that terrible and debilitating hip fracture. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Well, what are some of the steps that someone could take for the building stronger bones? Well, we love for people to get a lot more calcium and vitamin D, and so not enough Americans drink milk. You know, milk is a great source of calcium, but of course there's yogurt and cheese and for those folks who have lactose intolerance, they can take a calcium supplement. And for women, it's 1,200 milligrams each day. We also like to recommend that people get plenty of sunlight exposure so they can get that vitamin D. And if you, don't, if you want to use your sunscreen, then 1,000 international units a day is a good, good recommendation. 1,000 milligrams? How, well, how much is that? Actually, you know what? It's 800 international units a day. And it comes as an IU. Okay. Um, and what are, are there some other uh, ways to, to go about doing this? Sure. Some other recommendations are to get plenty of exercise. And people don't have to necessarily go to the gym. Although, if you want to go to the gym and get, get weight bearing exercise, that's a great idea. But just walking around the block or doing gardening. Gardening is a great way to get weight-bearing exercise. You know, when you're using a shovel or a rake, you're getting weight-bearing exercise. And when you're toting around all the yard waste and dumping it, you're getting weight-bearing exercise. All of those things, sunlight, calcium, exercise, all help prevent osteoporosis and keep our bones strong and healthy. What is the what entail? What does it entail to take this uh, bone mineral density test? Well, the bone mineral density test is really easy. You don't need a paper and pencil, and there's no needles, so there's no <laughs> pain involved, uh -huh. right? Yeah, that's so, good so far. It's a pretty simple test. You just lie down, and in a few minutes, we get a readout, and then you discuss it with your health care provider and find out, do I have osteoporosis? Am I at risk for losing height? Am I at risk for a hip fracture or even a spinal fracture? Now, is this something that uh, builds up? In other words, does it... Uh, um, uh, is this something like you should get at 50 and then get at 51 and get at 52 and they can start checking you or start earlier? What do you do? Well, Paul, I'm really glad you asked because I recommend it at age 50 for my patients and then we test them usually every two to three years after that. One thing that women can do is go to bonehealth.com to get a list of risk factors because so many times Insurance companies don't pay for it unless you have a risk factor. So at bonehealth.com, you can not only get a list of risk factors, but you can also get a page of questions you can download and bring to your doctor to say, hey, 
Do I need a bone mineral density test? Well, um, is that the determining factor, a doctor, whether you need it? Or is this something that, you know, doctor or no doctor, you should do? You know, I think <laughs> doctor or no doctor, you should do it. I yeah. think doctor or no doctor, this is something we should do. But usually we need to have the doctor order it oh, for okay. us. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm all right. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. But, you know, at bonehealth.com, it gives you the information you need so you can have that dialogue with your doctor and say, you know what, I really think I need this test, especially if there's a family history of osteoporosis or if you've had a fracture recently. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean... Because it affects so many people, I mean, but it's a serious disease. It's not like, uh, there's not like just pains in a joint here, right? You know, it, it is a serious disease. You know, some women who develop a fracture can't dress themselves. They can't stand up. They, they can't even walk. And we've all, unfortunately, heard of women who fracture a hip and end up in a nursing home. Or worse things can happen. We want to prevent that. So getting the bone mineral density test is the first step. Getting safe and effective treatments is another step to help prevent and reverse osteoporosis and prevent fracture. Ah, uh-huh, okay. I'm on the website. There's some e-newsletter that people can receive? There is. I love that website because they get e-newsletters. They can download information. There's a lot there from Sally Field. You know, she gives you exercise tips. She herself has osteoporosis. She takes a once-monthly medication called Boniva, to manage her osteoporosis so that she can stay active. You know, she's on television. She has to do a lot of taping. Having a once-monthly medication like Boniva has enabled her to have less worry about fracture. Um, So I love bonehealth.com. I I just learned recently that carrots are loaded with calcium. Uh Aha, really? Yeah, I learned that from bonehealth.com. Aha, oh, okay, all right. Well, you have a great spokesperson, no doubt about that. Oh, isn't she wonderful? Norma Ray. <laughs> oh, we love Sally Field. And, you know, she's passionate about it. So she's really helped a lot of women understand that they're at risk for osteoporosis and that there's something they can do, though. So it's not something that they have to just bear with. They can treat it with a safe and effective medication. Does that medication, uh, do, what, what does it do, actually? Actually, what it does is it tells the bone not to break down as much, so it keeps the bone stronger and healthier. It actually improves the bone quality, and we know from great studies that it helps prevent fracture, and that's the whole point, right? We don't want women to lose height, but we also don't want them to have a hip fracture. And what is it that does that? How how does it do something like that with a bone? What it does is it works on these little um, molecules called osteoclasts. And osteoclasts break down bone. And what Boniva and other bisphosphonates do is it tells the osteoclasts not to work so hard at breaking down bone so that the osteoblasts, those are the builders, they can build up more bone. You know, all of us are turning over bone constantly. And sometimes as we get older, our bone gets turned over faster. And so what the Boniva and other bisphosphonates do is it decreases the bone turnover. Is, is this, uh, you know, I, I sort of think that a lot of uh, problems internally are based around acidity in our system. Uh, uh, phosphates, are, uh, uh, is it that the bones, be, you know, and, and only because I think that acid burns things up and uh, could burn your bones up as well. Uh, it, does this make any sense? It's a great question. You know, a lot of people wonder about that, but I can reassure you that acidity doesn't have anything to do with bone loss. But I will tell you this, if you don't get enough calcium, it does affect your risk of bone loss. But not in this case, acidity is not really a risk factor. The phosphorus, there is a, is a chemical, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, bisphosphorus, what, what does that sort of mean? Well, it's, it's called a bisphosphonate. Bis, B-I-Z, B-I-S? Uh, it's B-I-S. Okay. P-H-O-S, P-H-O-N-A-T-E. It's a class of medications that decrease the amount of bone turnover that's occurring. So what happens is, if you think about your bone like a brick of cheese, right? Okay. Women with osteoporosis, and and men for that matter, Mm -hmm. their bones look more like a Swiss cheese. Mm -hmm. So instead of a nice block of cheddar, Mm -hmm. 
people with osteoporosis, it looks more like Swiss cheese with a lot of holes in it. Okay. Now, for more information, of course, you could go to bonehealth.com. You can actually see a picture of what a bone with osteoporosis looks like, and it's right there next to a bone that's normal. Where is that on here? Do you uh, know uh, approximately uh, bone With, health tips? Um, bone health tips is a great place to start. Um, okay. Also, you can go to the place where it says myboniva.com. That's another great uh -huh. place. Okay, well, I'm going to look at it a little more right now uh, because it's, it's very important work uh, that everyone's doing here. Congratulations. Thank you for sharing this good news with oh, us. Oh, that was wonderful. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.